Let's talk some Knicks right now. Celtics on the precipice of winning an NBA championship, banner number 18. And the question I think should be asked, how far away are the Knicks from the Celtics as currently constructed? And to answer that question and much more, we bring on the creator of Knicks Fan TV, host on Sirius XM's NBA radio, CP the Franchise, joins us now. CP, happy Father's Day, my friend. Thanks for coming on. Jay, thank you so much, man. Always a pleasure to be on with you. I'm, I'm so happy for your success and to, and to hear you on the radio uh, representing New Yorkers the right way. It, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be on with you today. Well, you represent all Knicks fans the right way. You have the largest following on the internet for any Knicks content, so we got to give you your flowers. But let me ask you this. When you watch these NBA Finals, you watch the Celtics team up close, does it, does it eat at you inside that we never got to truly see what this Knicks team could do when healthy against Boston? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I always looked at this Knicks playoff run, even before they started, as a what-if playoff run, just because they were going to go into it without Julius Randle. And as the playoffs progressed, they kept losing more and more vital pieces to their rotation. So it, it's always going to have you left wondering, what if this squad was at full health? How far could they really go? And when I look at them against the Boston Celtics, I do think the Knicks would give it a formidable run against this Boston Celtics team. I think they would be uh, the hardest opponent for the Celtics uh, based on their ability, number one, the star power of Jalen Brunson, an efficient three-level score, clutch in big moments, uh, the Knicks' ability to defend and rebound at an elite level. I think that would have given this Boston team a lot of fits. But also when you look at the Celtics, I mean, one through five on both ends of the floor, they are tough. You're looking at this series where if Boston wins and closes this series out, Jason Tatum's not even going to be the finals MVP. I mean, that's how deep they are. You have guys like Drew Holiday who can make a case for it or even Jalen Brown. So offensively, their ability to spread the floor, have five guys who can put the ball on the floor and create for each other, puts a lot of pressure on defenses. And then on the other end, it starts with their all-NBA defense backcourt and Drew Holiday and Derek White. And then you have Tatum and Brown, who are uh, good wing defenders in their own right. And then, hey, if you have a healthy Kristaps Porzingis who can help protect the rim, uh, makes that Boston team a tough out. And so uh, I think they would still beat the Knicks, but I, I think the Knicks would make it competitive for sure. CP the franchise with us here, founder, creator, Knicks Fan TV, the largest Knicks channel on the internet on YouTube alone, nearly 80,000 subscribers. And you can listen to CP on Sirius XM. NBA radio when you look at what the Knicks need to do this offseason CP what to you are the biggest priorities now for this Knicks team going forward the biggest priorities is maintaining and keeping their own guys and it starts with free agent center Isaiah Hartenstein uh, Hartenstein proved to be a, a a vital piece to this Knicks playoff run and their team a guy who if they do bring him back could be the, the de facto starter at the center position just based on his versatility offensively and his ability to now rebound and defend at a high level uh, but they will have competition for their services being that the Knicks only have his early bird rights the max that they can sign him I believe is close to about 17 million dollars but there will be other teams who are in need of a center who could pay him more such as the OKC Thunder the Orlando Magic maybe even the San Antonio Spurs so uh, the Knicks will have some competition there I also believe re-signing OG Ananobi is a top priority, uh, someone who I believe the Knicks will have the inside track on. So those two are top of the list. But as always with the Knicks and in the offseason, it's about attracting that star power. And so, you know, with the Knicks looking at potentially re-signing Ananobi to a big deal, re-signing Brunson to a big deal, they're going to move closer and closer to the dreaded second apron with the salary cap, which puts a lot of operational restrictions on how you can – build your team going forward so the clock is running out where if the Knicks are going to make a big splash they're going to have to do it soon uh, because sooner or later they won't be able to make those moves now there's a couple of names that could potentially be out there uh, Paul George you have Carl Anthony Towns uh, Donovan Mitchell you know by all accounts based on the people I spoke to it doesn't seem like the Knicks will be as high on a potential Donovan Mitchell pursuit as they were two seasons ago. Uh, but a guy I also look at is maybe a DeJounte Murray. The Atlanta Hawks did try to trade DeJounte Murray uh, during this past trade deadline. They could potentially break up that duo of DeJounte Murray and Trey Young. Atlanta also has the number one pick. And he's a guy who can give the Knicks more athleticism, a guy who can help run the second unit as a point guard and a playmaker. The, it, the fit is not perfect. It's not ideal. He's not, a, 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 he's not a, efficient or a floor spacer, if you will. 
But I do think with his athleticism and playmaking ability, he can certainly help uh, this Knicks team. CP the Franchise with us here at 98.7 ESPN. Jake Asman has got you till 6 o'clock. Then pregame coverage for Yankees Red Sox tonight on the station gets underway. You know, in regards to your comments there, CP, about acquiring a star, is there any scenario where the Knicks can land a star and Julius Randle is not somehow in that trade? I can't see it. Just based on contracts, matching contracts, they do have the Boyan Bogdanovich contract that they can potentially use. Uh, but if, if they're going to go out there and get, let's say, you know, a Carl Anthony Towns, and I would advise against that, uh, they're going to need to match <laughs> salaries and, and include a, a large salary. So you would potentially see Julius Randle being part of that deal. But if I'm the Knicks, I would not be so motivated to trade Julius Randle unless you're getting a clear cut upgrade uh, above him. A lot of fans still want to see Julius Randle finish the job, finish business here, especially in the playoffs for this Knicks team. But now you're seeing two years in a row where he's either been limited or a non-factor just based on injuries. And so Jalen Brunson is going to need help. We've seen these last two years that Jalen Brunson is a bona fide playoff stud. We just have to see if Julius Randle, who's been excellent in the regular season, and this Knicks team having gone 14-2 and two in January with Randall, OG, and Brunson is a clear sign. He just needs to be able to show this in the, in the playoffs, and, and I hope he gets that opportunity next season. When you look at you know, Julius Randall's future with this team, I mean, he could be due for an extension. Jalen Brunson as well could be due for an extension. How do you think Leon Rose is ultimately going to try and approach some of these contracts in addition to the one you spoke about already, trying to re-sign OG and Anobly? Yeah, and, and we also heard earlier this year, this year, according to Steve Popper of Newsday, that Jalen Brunson may entertain the possibility of signing a contract extension early, as early as this offseason with the Knicks, which would certainly help the Knicks in terms of future pursuits. And so I think that would be key. With Julius Randle, early reports are indicating that the Knicks and Julius Randle are not close on any type of contract extension, and many believe that they, they may allow him to play this next season out as sort of a prove-it deal just to see where his market truly is and, and what his future is with this team. CP the Franchise, creator of Knicks Fan TV, host on Sirius XM's NBA Radio, my guest here on 98.7 ESPN New York. CP, what was your reaction? What were some of your takeaways from the interview that Tom Thibodeau did on Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart's podcast that came out earlier this week? Uh, it, was, it was a funny podcast, and shout-out to the Roommates podcast. They do a great job, uh, and Jalen Brunson and, and Josh Hart, based on the guests that they've had so far. And, look, it, it's an opportunity. We, we've never seen Tom Thibodeau in, the, in that light and adding levity and, and showing his sense of humor because uh, the reputation that Tom Thibodeau has around the league is, is a basketball lifer. He's in the gym 24-7 and, and looking to get his team prepared. And so you got to see, I guess, the softer side of Tom Thibodeau, which I think is good for his brand. But also, he did clap back at the naysayers who, you know, criticize, often criticize Tom Thibodeau about potentially running players into the ground and a lot of the injuries that the Knicks uh, sustained this past season. A lot of people wanted to blame Tom Thibodeau for for overusing players and playing them too many minutes. But, you know, Tom Thibodeau shrugged it off. And in addition to Tom Thibodeau, I, I, I thought we heard uh, Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart also come to his defense in talking about the fact that, you know, Nick's practices are really not grueling from a physical standpoint. They're more mental walkthroughs. And so, yes, you're going to put in more effort on the court during games, but there are ways to balance your workload over the course of the season. So uh, I thought it was a good way to see a different side of Tom Thibodeau. And, you know, as, as I said, he was also defensive in, uh, in his critiques. Alan Hahn, who you and I both know well, and of course, Alan, a part of this station, he said a couple of weeks ago, hey, you know, Jalen Brunson and Tom Thibodeau, like they're they're attached to the hip. Like Brunson is not going to be on board if the Knicks ever moved away from Tom Thibodeau. And I'll tell you what, CP, you tell me if you agree. Listening to that podcast, you could see it. You could hear it. The, the connection that Jalen has with the head coach, that's why Tom Thibodeau is going to be here. He has complete buy-in from the superstar on this team. And that's all that matters, Jake. It's, it's not about what NBA players say in the poll that he, he's the least – you know, he's the coach that they would least want to play for. It's not about what we think in the media or what the fans think. It's all about what your star player thinks. As long as your star player is locked in with his coach and they are in lockstep, you know, Jalen Brunson, it, it's, he may not even come here if it weren't for Tom Thibodeau being here. So uh, this is your two-man ticket that you're going to have for the foreseeable future 
especially when the Knicks look to extend Tom Thibodeau. And so that that's it. These are our guys. And based on what we've seen, the results over the past two seasons, I'm, I'm confident in that duo. Yeah, happy Father's Day to uh, Rick Brunson. Thank you for Jalen Brunson. No doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> happy Father's Day to Rick and happy birthday. I think it was his birthday on Friday as well. And there you go. Final question for me, CP. Does the NBA Finals end tomorrow night in Boston? I think it does. You know, we saw a spirited effort in game four with the Dallas Mavericks. Luka Doncic addressing his critics who, who dogged him out for his lack of effort and always being a crybaby. And so the Mavs gave it their best shot. It uh, looks like the Celtics. Look, human nature plays into these things. You're not always going to be on your A game. And the closeout games are always the hardest. And so uh, I think the Celtics go back home in front of their home crowd and uh, give the Mavs a bit of their own medicine in terms of coming out the gates hot. I'm not sure if the Mavs will be able to sustain or, or be able to maintain, but if they do, it will take, I think it's going to take a, a 30, 40 point triple double effort by Luka Doncic. One of those classic NBA games that you talk about for years to come. And Kyrie Irving is also going to have to come along for the ride. Irving was not good in the first two games of this series in Boston. So he's going to have to come along for the ride because you just don't know what the supporting cast mates, the role players are going to give you, especially on the road. So it's going to have to start with the Mavs big two if they even want to have a sliver of a chance. CP, you are the man. Thank you so much for coming on. And I'm sure we'll catch up along the way. I appreciate you, man. Jake, anytime, man. Have a great week. Continue success and uh, keep up the good work, man. CP, the franchise, the founder, the creator of Knicks Fan TV, and you can listen to him on Sirius XM's NBA radio. Good stuff there from him. Let's come back, react to some of what he said, especially the stuff about Tom Thibodeau, because we got some sound from that roommates podcast with Brunson, Josh Hart, and Coach Tibbs that we should play and react. Knicks fans, the question, throw it out to you. Can the Knicks, as currently constituted, as currently constructed, beat the Boston Celtics in a seven-game series. 800-919-3776, 800-919-ESPN is the number. Back with your calls and much more. Keep it here. Jake Asman with you. It's 98.7 ESPN New York.